Hello Grade 11s. In this lesson, we join a group of learners as they demonstrate Bohr's Law practically in a lab. In another lesson, we have seen that as volume is decreased, pressure increases by the same factor. In other words, pressure and volume are inversely proportional to one another. In that lesson, we investigated Bohr's Law with only simplified data and a simulation. In this lesson, we join Mr. Mashapa and his learners as they demonstrate Bohr's Law with real equipment and real data. We are going to look at the relationship between pressure as well as volume. Now in this case, which other two variables should we keep constant? Ntabi say? The temperature and the mass must be kept constant. The temperature and the mass must be kept constant. Like for instance, we have a syringe here. Inside here, what do we have inside the syringe? Ntabi say? We have a trapped gas inside the syringe. Now I'm going to exert pressure by pushing on this piston. Tell me, what do you think would happen as I increase pressure on this piston? What do you think would happen if I apply pressure? What would happen to the volume inside here? Hopolang? The volume will decrease. The volume will decrease. That's excellent. That's your prediction. Let's see what happens then. Let's ask Nelly to tell us more about the demonstration Mr. Mashapa and his learners are busy with. Pressure is exerted by a trapped gas because the gas particles exert a force when they collide with the sides of the container that they are trapped in. When a gas is compressed, the surface area is decreased the particles literally have fewer places to go. This means that they will collide with the sides of the container more often, increasing the force they exert. Since pressure is calculated as force per unit area, we can therefore expect an increase in pressure with a decrease in volume. Each group of learners has been given a different set of apparatus to investigate the relationship between pressure and volume. Do you think that the different sets of equipment will give similar results? The first group has been given apparatus very similar to the apparatus used by Boyle. A fixed mass of gas has been trapped inside a closed glass tube. This glass tube is connected to a second glass container by a tube filled with mercury. The second glass container is open. Air pressure is exerted on the mercury in this second container. When the levels of mercury in both tubes are equal, the pressure of the gas in the closed container, Pg, is equal to the air pressure, Pa. When the levels of mercury are not equal, the pressure of the trapped gas is different to the atmospheric pressure. The difference in pressure is equal to the difference in height of mercury, H, measured in millimeters. When the level of the mercury is higher in the closed tube than in the open tube, the pressure of the gas is less than atmospheric pressure. Pg equals Pa minus H. When the level of the mercury is lower in the closed tube than in the open tube, the pressure of the gas is greater than atmospheric pressure. Pg equals Pa plus H. The apparatus given to the next group consists of a syringe mass pieces and a piece of thin wire. The barrel of the syringe has been sealed. When the plunger of the syringe is inserted into the sealed barrel, a thin piece of wire is attached to the plunger. Once the plunger is depressed to about 40 milliliters, the wire is removed. This equalizes the pressure in the barrel and the atmospheric pressure. Do you understand how this equalizing of the pressure works? Well, the air pressure in an open container is equal to atmospheric pressure. But as we have already seen, decreasing the volume that a fixed mass of trapped gas occupies increases pressure. So in order for us to ensure that the pressure inside the closed syringe starts off equal to atmospheric pressure, 
we have to create an opening between the plunger and the barrel. We do this with the piece of wire, which essentially makes this an open container as long as the wire is in the barrel. When you reach the desired volume, you remove the wire, sealing in a fixed mass of gas at atmospheric pressure in the syringe. By placing mass pieces on top of the syringe plunger, the pressure of the air trapped inside the syringe can be changed. Pressure is equal to force in newtons divided by area in meters squared. Using this apparatus, the learners measure the volume of gas when the force applied changes. The apparatus given to the third group is called the Boyle's Law Apparatus and consists of a sealed glass tube filled with a red liquid attached to a pressure gauge. They have also been given a pump. The pressure gauge measures the pressure the liquid is exerting on the trapped gas. The pump is used to increase the pressure. To ensure that temperature remains constant, the learners in each of the groups wait a few minutes after changing the pressure before taking their readings. Then our last reading is the atmospheric pressure. The volume is at one hundred it's ten comma one, I think. So about ten point one is ten point one. Yeah, ten point. This is the worksheet that the learners received. Look at the table of data that they were asked to collect. Remember that what they are investigating is the relationship between pressure and volume. Looking at these readings, you should pick up a trend. Do you notice that as the values for pressure increase, the values for volume decrease? This gives us an indication that an inversely proportional relationship exists between these two variables. There are two easy ways to confirm an inversely proportional relationship. Algebraically, by finding the product of P and V, which should give you a constant if the relationship is inversely proportional. Or by plotting a graph of P over V and getting a hyperbola. One of the columns in the table requires the learners to do the calculation of P multiplied by V, but the unit they need to express the answer in is joules. You should remember that centimeters cubed multiplied by kilopascal does not give you an answer in joules. The learners first had to convert their readings to decimeters cubed by dividing them by 1,000. Look, although the answers are all close to 0, 0,9, their calculations do not give a true constant. Why do you think this is? Well, it is important to note that this lack of a true constant does not automatically tell us that there is no inversely proportional relationship. The different answers could merely be due to experimental error or inaccurate readings. To be sure about whether or not there is in fact an inversely proportional relationship between pressure and volume, let's watch as Mr. Mashapa draws a graph of P against V. Now let us plot now the graph of volume against pressure. Looking at these readings here, I think I'll need a color chalk. I'll use this one. Now we are going to get the points here. Three for volume, it must correspond to 248. Have you done that in your? Yes, yes. Right, fine. According to mine here, I have three for volume, and that corresponds to 248. So we have 250 here. I'll estimate it to be somewhere here. Yeah. I'll have that point marked there for 248. Are we happy with that? Yes. Yes. Right. Now the next reading, volume 6 and the pressure is 150. Okay. Volume 6 
and the pressure 150. There we are, this one, no problem. Then we have our point right up there. The third one, it's nine and 110. So we have nine cubic centimeters and 110. So we'll go, 110 can be somewhere. And I think we have now the last reading. Huh? That would be 10 and 100. There, there it is. Now we have our four readings, and then we can now try to join these points. Look at it. Here we go. All right, fine. Now, that gives that shape of a graph. By the way, you said that is, what do you call that? The hyperbola. But now, <clears throat> what is important is that as the volume decreases, as we go through, what happens at this point? You look at this point, the volume was 10, and the pressure was 100. You look at the next point, what happened to the volume from 10 to 9? It decreased. Now, let's look at the corresponding pressure. From this, you realize that now the pressure was more than 100. It means that now it has increased, right? Now, if you look at this, as you go through this, you realize that now as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. That would mean that now we have an idea that now pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. And if that is true, then this would mean that now pressure multiplied by volume must always give us a constant. Can you think of another way to confirm that P times V equals K? Well, if you plot a graph of values calculated for 1 over p against the original readings for volume, you will get a straight line graph. The gradient of this graph is calculated as change in y divided by change in x. In this case, it is delta v divided by delta 1 over p. No matter which value you substitute into this formula, the answer will always be the same because this is a straight line graph. We can say that this calculation always gives us a constant. Now you could further simplify this expression by inverting the fraction and changing the sign from divide to multiply. And you once again confirm that V times P equals K. Now let's get somebody to state Boyle's law in waves. The volume of a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to the pressure exerted upon it, provided that temperature remains constant. Excellent. The volume of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure exerted on it, provided the temperature remains constant. In that case, if pressure 1 multiplied by volume 1 gives us a constant, pressure 2, you now take another set. Pressure 2 multiplied by volume 2 must also give you a constant. And in that case, this would mean that now, if P1 multiplied by V1 is equal to K, and P2 multiplied by V2 is equal to K. Therefore, P1 multiplied by V1 should be equal to P2 multiplied by V2. Now, this equation comes from Boyle's law. Thank you, Mr. Mashapa, and to your learners, and also to Nelly. 
Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.